So, the Drake curse. Is it really real or should we blame Chance, the rapper? Hi, I'm Phil Whitby. Uh, I'm a developer at Swiftcase and I'm here today to carry on with my series on biases and this one is on uh, the Drake curse. Now Drake is a famous celebrity who likes to be seen uh, celebrating with other celebrities. Maybe he just wants a good time, or maybe he wants to align his brand with other uh, really high profile brands and therefore enhances earning potential and sales. Well, whatever the reason is, um, they're all justifiable because it looks like he's having fun. However, this sort of craven approach is uh, starting to backfire because he's always seeking out people that are successful or extremely successful and hopefully basking in their reflected glory. Now, the problem is, these people or teams, it could be basketball teams, it could be MMA fighters, boxers, the most recent being Anthony Joshua who lost uh, against a serious underdog recently. Now all these teams or athletes have appeared to um, uh, lose after, after they posed for a photo with Drake to the extent that some clubs have banned photographs with Drake. Now, is this an overreaction or is there some substance to this? What do you think? Well, um, despite what you might think, there's no such thing as black magic or voodoo or a curse. It actually can be explained by statistical reasoning. There is something called a regression towards the mean, which is where if you um, have a, an event which has some degree of luck, even if it's small, and it tends to be an extreme measure of that event then the next time you measure it it's much more likely that it will be a moderate measurement so whether if you have extremely uh, low measurement or extremely high measurement the next time it's more likely to regress towards the average of the uh, that event's um, frequency or number so while i was a teacher I uh, would always notice this uh, in my classroom as um, students would always try and throw a piece of rolled up paper or a pen into the bin from you know six feet or more and each time they were doing so in a way to um, keep, you know gain plaudits from the rest of the classroom and assert their dominance as the skillful individual. Now whenever they actually manage to get it in any sort of request to repeat it would be denied by them because obviously they intuitively understood that there was a degree of chance in getting in. So there's a good chance they'd miss it next time. So this, most people have an intuitive understanding of regression towards the mean and demonstrate it in this way. Um, one of the uh, psychologists who really made this a prominent, uh, uh, made a prominent study about this regression towards the mean tendency um, was Daniel Kahneman and he noticed that because you needed two jumps um, in ski jumping he noticed that commentators would uh, have an intuitive grasp of regression towards the mean and then would develop this false narrative to justify it rather than acknowledging that it was statistically likely they would rationalize it as being related to the skiers performance so for instance if they had a great first jump the commentator would rationalise that the, the ski jumper was going to be hoping to protect his lead and would be you know, nervous and, and tight and therefore that's why they do worse and if they had a, a bad jump then um, he's got nothing to lose so you may as well relax and just go for it and that's why he'd have a better jump. Now similar kind of narrative fallacies develop everywhere. I would see this even in teaching as well <clears throat> and Kahneman found a particular example when he was in the Israeli Air Force where pilot instructors would swear that if you scolded a pilot after they performed badly in a maneuver they would perform better and if you complimented them after a good maneuver they would perform worse and that there was a direct relationship between the compliment or the scolding to the behavior. Now this of course we know is a, is a complete fallacy because it was just simple regression. But the key thing, the key takeaway from this bias is that everyone overestimates the degree of power and control the individuals 
or the stakeholders in the situation have. So in each case, you know, the commentator for the uh, ski jumping assumed the skier had more control over his body and of events than he did. And the pilot instructors assumed the pilots had more control over the maneuvers than they did. And also that he, they themselves, the instructors, had more control over the pilots because if they scolded them, they performed better. Whereas actually, that relationship may not be that strong. And what you were witnessing is you know, this uh, regression around the mean and trying to force a narrative that, um, that basically in, imbues the actors in the scenario with more power than they actually have, when really they're just victims of chance. So in a way, how does Drake fit into this? Well, Drake was like the compliments by the pilot instructor. His presence there was a compliment to those people that they uh, hit the extremes or they performed in an extreme way. So it's easy for people to correlate Drake's presence as being causative to the decline afterwards. Whereas it's very, very similar to the pilot instructor's compliment. It's there because it was an extreme event. So it's therefore more likely that the following measurement will decline or regress towards the average, which of course is less. So what's the lessons for business here? So the lesson for business is that, you know, you have to be careful when you have a success and you have to be just as careful when you have a failure. Don't be too hard on yourself, don't blame yourself. You're not fully in control of everything your clients, your customers do, of the reality outside, the, in the outside world. You're not necessarily in control of that. So you can't be taking too much credit for successes because there are many factors outside of your control, including chance. And don't be too hard on yourself and it's not too much of a defeat if you fail. This also applies in personal relationships. You know, if someone appears to fail, don't be too hard on them. If they're successful, don't lionize them so much because they will only disappoint you if you do. And conversely, you'll be surprised when somebody does better, but have you really attributed the, uh, the right balance of luck and skill? Uh, and would you make a, an error when it came to judgments about other people or employees if you think that everyone has much more agency over the results that they're getting than they actually do? Once again, I've been Phil Whitby. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, this is the third in the series, uh, and the next video in the series will be on normalcy bias. See you again next time.